Tragic historical events have shown mankind that nuclear disasters bring destructive and costly consequences. Countries that have developed nuclear energy strive to prevent such disasters at all costs. Safe transportation of spent nuclear fuel is a priority in preventing such disasters. Currently, many countries use nuclear flasks to deliver the material to its final destination. But how did they make sure the flasks were safe? In the early 1980s, the UK spent £4 million on a four-year program to test the nuclear flasks in different potential situations. And on July 17, 1984, the program came to a head as millions of people worldwide tuned in to watch Operation Smash Hit, a train crash shown on live TV. A driverless Type 46 diesel locomotive and three carriage carts were set to crash into a nuclear flask at full speed to test how the device would react to sudden impact. The spectacular demonstration was captured with over 32 cameras. Would these unique nuclear flasks withstand a train wreck? Nuclear flask. For over three decades, the United Kingdom has relied on nuclear flasks to safely transport active nuclear substances from the power station to the nuclear fuel reprocessing facility. These large shipping containers weigh 50 tons and can carry up to two and a half tons of nuclear material. They have walls one foot deep and lids made of large steel forgings held together with 16 bolts, each one capable of withstanding a load of 150 tons without breaking. The nuclear flasks are intrinsically intended to maintain the substance's integrity for different transportation circumstances, such as sudden impact or fire. They prevent physical leakage and provide radiological shielding. Over the past 35 years, the UK has conducted over 14,000 cask shipments of spent nuclear fuel worldwide, transporting more than 9,000 tons of the substances for over 16 million miles via road, rail, and sea, without any major radiological release. To ensure the nuclear flasks are safe for transportation and other potential functionalities, they must be submitted to a series of rigorous testing, following the standards drawn up by the International Atomic Energy Agency. In the early 1980s, the British Nuclear Fuels Limited, a nuclear company funded by the government, developed a comprehensive testing program of hundreds of impact tests. In the initial trials, the company used scaled models of the flasks filled with water and dropped from several foot heights at different angles. In 1983, the government decided to do further testing with full-scale models to further enhance the British public's confidence. The complete test program cost four million pounds and spanned four years. On March 6, 1984, phase one of the full-size program was carried out. A full-scale flask straight off the assembly line was filled with water and dropped from a height of 30 feet. The flask was dropped on its weakest point. Still, the results were successful as only a small amount of water escaped. The quantity was so small that had it been nuclear fuel, it would not have represented a hazard to society. Despite its success, dropping the nuclear flask wasn't enough. The real test would take place months later. Operation Smash Hit In July 1984, Operation Smash Hit fascinated the UK. The same flask from the full-scale drop test was filled with over a ton of water and 200 steel rods to simulate their nuclear counterparts. It was then mounted on a rail car, placed on a test track in Leicestershire, and laid on its side right on the trails. A 140-ton British Rail Class 46 locomotive was chosen to impact the flask at full speed. To add to the power of the impact, the train was supplemented with three passenger cars. The flask was pressurized to 100 psi per square inch to measure any loss or dents sustained during the impact. 32 different cameras were installed in the surrounding areas to capture the impact from different angles. A helicopter was also procured to chase the train to its destination. The driverless train was set in motion down the tracks, and its speed was checked by engineers using radar guns. In front of 1,500 people invited to witness the event, the train accelerated and reached 100 miles per hour before impacting the nuclear flask at full speed. After the shocking collision, the 22-year-old locomotive was almost completely destroyed, and the entire train became derailed. Once the dust and smoke cleared, the engineers noted that the flask was completely intact. The pressure inside it was measured by the engineers, and only 0.29 per square inch had escaped. Operation Smash Hit was a resounding success. Following the test, the Central Electricity Generating Board produced a booklet showing the crash in all of its 32 angles. Pictures showed the locomotive hitting the flask and immediately bursting into a ball of flames and mangled metal. In the middle of all the chaos, the nuclear flask lay undamaged. 
The video footage, featured on news channels and several international newspapers, proved that the nuclear flask was totally safe for transporting radioactive materials. Since the planned train crash almost four decades ago, the UK has transported thousands of nuclear flasks all over the country. The collisions flask is set on display at the Haysham Nuclear Power Station in Haysham, Lancashire, England.